Hello there. I'm Andrew Joseph Keith. Perhaps you've heard of me. But more likely you have no idea who I am. I'm an artist and sculptor and today I'll be sculpting... A zombie. For Monstober. Let's get into it. As far as supplies go, I'll be using some 12 gauge soft aluminum wire, some pliers with wire cutters, a ruler, a small floor sample to put the sculpture on, a stainless steel sculpting tool, and some Chavant NSP medium clay. I start all my figure sculptures by making the armature. Now I want to capture the gesture of the pose with the armature. I took some reference photos of myself in a pose that I thought was zombie-like. Look at that face. That face is the face of an artistic genius. Uh -huh. Once I made the armature, I stuck it to the base with some clay. This clay is medium, mixed with a little bit of harder clay, which helps it be firmer so that I can sculpt this piece without an external stand. Once the gesture is in place, I started by building out the pelvis and rib cage. The relationship between these two primary masses of the body will help me capture the pose and give me some structure on which I can build the secondary forms of the muscles and bones. I'm going for a boxy shape for the pelvis and an egg shape for the rib cage. Once the ribcage and pelvis are in place, then I can sculpt the head. And it's a good idea to constantly check and recheck the gesture as well as the balance of the figure. I want the sculpture to feel balanced from every angle. I always try to push the gesture a little bit farther than the photo references because I like that exaggerated style, almost like a comic book style. I think it's cool. It's good for everything to be thin as we're sculpting, especially for this sculpture, which is basically going to be a emaciated zombie. So I'm going to try to keep things thin. To build out the forms, I'm just taking small bits of clay and adding them slowly here and there to bulk out the sculpture. As I'm adding clay, I'm trying to consider the anatomy. Since this will be a skinny, bony, skeleton-like zombie, I need to make sure that I get the anatomy right or it'll just look silly. A great reference tool for this is the Skelly app. It lets me pose the skeleton in the same pose as the reference of myself, and then I have a 3D skeleton that I can move around to help inform the bony structures of this zombie. As I focus on the head, I also have a physical skull reference to help inform the structure of the head. When it comes to references, the more the better. I also like to focus on the gesture of the individual parts. The legs and the feet and the arms and hands will have a gesture of their own. Capturing this gesture of the individual parts of the body will help make the pose more convincing. For this sculpture, I want to have a loose, sketchy look, almost like a painterly look where you can see each stroke of the brush, but instead of strokes of the brush, it's pieces of clay that I, you know, put on with my, my hand. I don't think a smooth, fine finish would have gone very well with this zombie. This was actually a great exercise to help me think more about the anatomy and how the muscles are twisting or stretching because of the pose. And there we have it.
one zombie sculpture ready for Halloween and ready to be posted on the social medias. If you're interested in things that have to do with sculpture, you can find me on Instagram at Andrew Joseph Keith. If you send me a direct message, I'll let you in on some things that are in the works that I can't mention here, but uh, it's pretty exciting. As always, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.